David here with Fig Boudon Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have the latest iteration in the Pelican M101 N lineup. Uh, it was released late last year, I believe, and is the gray blue. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Pelican M101 gray blue. I'll want to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Applebaum for the loan of this pen for review. On a side note, I did a little do-it-yourself project this weekend. We had an art supply box in the house that was being thrown out and I thought I might repurpose it. So in order to accomplish this, I utilized some pen storage trays and a pen attic t-shirt. Uh, I removed the existing trays and then I cut up the t-shirt. It had some holes in it, so I didn't feel too bad about cutting that up. Uh, I cut the pen trays to fit and glued in the shirt, and now we have some new pen storage. Now, whenever I show these blue trays, I always get questions as to where to get them. There are a number of sources, but I will put a link in the notes below where I have purchased them from in the past. Okay, let's get to this pen review. Uh, the pen arrives in this retro looking gift box, and then inside we have a couple of things. Uh, there is a use and care guide, and then it also includes a bottle of 4001 Royal Blue ink with a label that matches the box, which is nice. Uh, a bit of a side note, uh, the 4001 is a bit of an odd name for an ink. Uh, it originated back in 1898 when Gunther Wagner, not long after he purchased the company, began producing a number of different writing and copying inks. Um, each of the ink lines were given a different name. There was the 2001, 3001, 4001. And then later on there'd be a 5 and 6001. But over time, the 4001 ink remained the most popular Pelican ink. Uh, but that is how it got its name. And then we have this nice little faux leather pouch, and inside we have the pen. Uh, this is the Pelican M101 in, in gray-blue. Uh, the pen is made from resin, and the trim is palladium plated. Uh, the cap is black, and then the barrel is a pearlescent gray-blue. In some of the pictures I've seen online of this pen, the barrel material kind of appears to be a bit flat, but I find that not to be the case when looking at it in person. Uh, there's a fair amount of chatoyance in this mostly directional design. Uh, as you turn the pen, uh, as, it, as it catches the light, it really displays a great deal of vibrance in tone and color. Uh, this is the fifth modern variation of this pen. Uh, previously, there was a tortoiseshell red, a tortoiseshell brown. Uh, there was a model called Lizard, which was kind of gray and scaly. And then there was a bright red. The 101N model itself dates back to 1937. Now, some of these materials are more modern interpretations of their vintage counterparts, but this blue-gray material is uh, new and doesn't have a, uh, we'll call it, inspiration model from Pelican's vintage backlog. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it's rounded, and on it we have the modern Pelican logo. Something I found interesting is how the logo has changed over time. In the original 1873 logo, there were three chicks in the nest. These symbolized Wagner's three children. And then a few years later, after the birth of his fourth child, an additional chick was added. Uh, about 50 years later, the logo was redesigned in order to simplify the design, and the number was reduced down to two chicks. And then finally, the current design, which further simplified to only have a single chick in the nest. And why is the brand called Pelican? I mentioned this uh, several years ago in my review of the M1000, but it's because a Pelican appeared on the family coat of arms of Gunther Wagner. Uh, here's an example of a Pelican family crest. Uh, according to medieval folklore, the mother Pelican would feed her young with her own blood by plucking the feathers from her breast. So the mother is typically depicted feeding its young with some drops of blood on its chest. Uh, you could see how that imagery inspired their logo. Uh, the pelican and the chicks, not the blood. Uh, near the top of the cap, one side is engraved with pelican, and on the opposite side it says Germany. Uh, we have a palladium plated band and clip. Uh, this pen has a vintage teardrop clip rather than the pelican beak clip that you see on most of their modern models. 
Uh, past the clip band, the cap is straight and with the end adorned with dual bands. Uh, there is a medium sized step down to the barrel. Uh, the barrel is straight until you reach the end, which has a piston knob, which we'll talk about more here in a bit. And the end of that knob is rounded and smooth. The cap twists off with three quarters of a rotation, and underneath we have a nice rhodium plated 14 karat gold nib. Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Uh, I like the stamping on this nib. It's simple, but something a little bit different. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Um, one of the nice things about Pelican pens is that the nib and feed are housed in a single unit, which are very easy to remove, especially for cleaning, which I appreciate. Uh, cleaning a piston filler at times can be a challenge, so being able to remove the unit makes it a lot easier. And it makes it uh, simple to change the nib if you choose to do so either. The section begins with the flare and is slightly narrow. Uh, this isn't the largest pen overall. Uh, the section angles up until it reaches the cap threads, and then we have this rather generous ink window. Uh, I like that it's not transparent. I feel having it with a bit of gray-blue translucency gives it a much cleaner look. And it's not so dark that you have a problem seeing the ink. You can get a really good look at your ink situation in there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is a piston filler. The piston knob has these grooves. Now, in theory, these narrow grooves are designed to help you maintain your grip when you're activating the piston, but I really don't find that to be the case. There is a very small step down from the barrel to the knob that's just large enough that it prevents my fingers from actually making decent contact with the grooves. If they extended a little bit further back on the piston knob, then I might be able to utilize them, but as designed, I don't see that they actually do much good. I don't find this piston knob to be slick, uh, and it's easy to operate even without the additional grip assistance from the groove, so it's really not much of an issue. Um, while this is a smaller pen, I do find it long enough to use unposted. The cap does post, and it does post securely. Um, the cap is fairly light, so I don't feel posting back weights the pen or throws off the balance. I do find for me the edge of the cap rubs up against the inside of my hand when posted, but I don't find the edge to be sharp or uncomfortable. The Pelican M101N is available on the Applebaum site for $350. Now, that is a significantly uh, less expensive price than I've seen it elsewhere. On other prominent retailers, I've seen this pen listed for around $550. I'll put a link in the notes below where you can check this pen out on the Applebaum site. Thanks again. Go out to Joe's from Applebaum for the loan of this pen. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Go with some size comparisons for the Pelican M101 Gray Blue. Uh, in regard to some other Pelicans, here it is with an M205, uh, and then here it is with an M805, and then finally here it is with an M1000. And in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Mont Blanc 146 a Pilot Vanishing Point Raiden Water Surface, and then finally a Dual Fold Centennial Big Red from Parker. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the M205 and the Mont Blanc 146 and the Pelican M805. Here we go with the writing sample for the Pelican M101N, and this is the gray blue. This is a broad 14 karat gold nib, and the ink that I'm using today is Pelican 4001 royal blue. Uh, 
This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a nice royal blue. It has decent saturation. Here it is in comparison to the Mont Blanc royal blue, uh, as well as the SD DuPont royal blue, which is a little bit lighter. Uh, this is the Faber-Castell royal blue. Uh, and then finally, the J. Herban Louis XIV, which is another kind of darker uh, royal blue. And you saw it earlier, but this is what the bottle looks like. This is their typical 4001 bottle. And it has a nice label that matches the, uh, the label on the box that this pen comes in. Okay, so now let's get to the rest of the writing sample. Pelican nibs tend to be very smooth, uh, and this broad nib is no exception. Uh, if you're looking for a very glassy, uh, very smooth nib, then this broad nib is uh, right in your ballpark. You aren't gonna get tons of line variation out of here. You might get a little bit. Uh, the ink flow is decent on this pen. In regard to reverse writing, it's very smooth. And in regard to some fast writing, there's no issues whatsoever and it lays down a nice bold line. So there you have the Pelican M101 gray blue. Uh, for a small pen, I do care for this. It's not so small that I feel like it's a pocket pen. I feel that even uh, without it being capped, it's a decent size. And I do care for the contrast between the gray-blue barrel uh, and the black uh, remainder of the pen. So it's something interesting that you might want to check out. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.